Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Henry Gray, and I'm excited to show you today how I'm going to paint a covered bridge here in Olmstead Falls, beautiful Ohio. All right, so let's jump in. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe before you leave if you enjoy this video. And right down in the corner is a little black and white picture of me that if you click on that, you can subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to get any announcements of when I put a new video up. So today I'm in beautiful Olmstead Falls, Ohio. And I've got this gorgeous covered bridge and these lovely fall colors. And so I'm going to do a demo of this bridge today in some of these fall colors. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I want to achieve with this when I do my thumbnail sketch. And then during the course of this video, I'm gonna be quiet and I'll do a voiceover because it's a very public area and there's planes flying overhead all the time. So, so let's jump in. Now on my palette today, I have a few new colors. I have uh, my normal ones that I always use, titanium white, cadmium yellow medium. I have cadmium red light for some fall colors, cadmium yellow light, yellow ochre, now for my new uh, colors that I have out today that um, I don't always use, I have a transparent red oxide. I have an Indian red, the little, little bit right there, and it's a really strong color, so I'm not gonna use very much of that. I have my regular burnt sienna, and then I put out some Venetian red right here. So I have ultramarine blue, and then I grabbed a little bit of cerulean blue. Then I have alizarin crimson and phthalo green. I've got my linseed oil over here, a little bit of thinner down here, and my regular assortment of brushes, two, four, six, eight, and flat. I've got some tiny ones, um, some smaller chiseled edges. I've got a palette knife and a liner and a few other things I think I might need. My canvas today is a 14 by 17. It's a little bit larger than what I normally use because I, I know that I wanna really capture a lot of this scene and it's just such a beautiful scene with kind of elongated. So I know I'm gonna go in a horizontal format for this as well. So I'm gonna do a sketch here and talk about some of that. So I can start out with the rectangular format and then just sort of figure where I want the line of sight to go in. From here, I've got this fence going down and this wall and I've got the bridge going to be up here, but I've got trees breaking that line. Now what happens is, is as I work out this sketch, is that I can kind of get too crowded and I'm not really sure where I'm going with things at this point. So it might be a little bit better idea to um, work from the inside out. So if I know what I want first, I want the bridge up here. I'm just going to do a quick sketch. Here's the roof of that covered bridge and goes back this way. And all of that information we'll get later. But so if that just fits right in there, I'm not worried about the rest of it. I've got a stone wall here. I want the atmosphere under the bridge. So that's important to me. Knowing what you love and what's important is half the key to figuring out what you're gonna get and knowing when you're done. If you don't know those things, then you're gonna have a really hard time knowing what to paint and when to stop. So I like how the sky comes through above it. And I want some of these trees up here. 
and I know that I want these trees just going right off the canvas. They have a really nice shape to them, how they sort of play with each other that way. And so the fence is going to come down around this way and tuck around back here behind that stone wall showing an underpass that you can walk under the bridge. And this will all be dark under here. And then the path is getting a lot of sun here with some green on it right here. This is all still going to be dark. Dark. The reason that I was drawn to this particular angle of the bridge is because I really liked the composition of these shadow shapes and how interesting it made the format. When you come to a location and it's a fairly complex design, Take a photograph of it because I know that all these shadows are going to change a lot as I'm working. And I do want to um, make this a complete painting because it's just such a beautiful scene. So I'll be finishing it up in the studio. I don't know if I'll do that today or as part of this video because this will probably be a fairly long one. So I'm going to just summarize as much as I can. And it'll get you to the place if you're working on something where you can go back to your studio and work on something from a plein air painting. Finish your plein air painting. So I like that and I'm going to put probably this tree here and just suggest some of that trailing off this way. So the edge of my canvas will be like this. And I establish my boundaries that way. Maybe I can bring over this edge a little more. That's going to be great. Just about like that. And I can map out where my values are also going to be. So I've got a lighter value on the roof and then the light hitting the front of the building and on the side over here and then on the pavement in front of me. So I'm going to use these as leading the eye back to this area. That's where I want the focus. All right, so I am beginning this painting with just toning the canvas. Um, I use a very little bit of thinner. And normally I tone a canvas with a little bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And it sort of gives me sort of a grayish tone. Um, but in this case, I wanted a little bit more of that golden effect coming through. So it's a little more burnt sienna and yellow ochre. Knowing that some of the canvas can show through helps determine what color to tone the canvas. In this case, I wanted that autumn glow. So now, uh, again, with just a little bit of the thinned down paint um, with a thin mixture of the burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, I'm drawing in what I had worked out as my thumbnail sketch. So referring mostly to my thumbnail sketch at this point in the process, I'm blocking in where I had established those boundaries and then the overall value patterns that I had um, worked out ahead of time. Just getting those shapes as accurate as I can in relation to the, um, the composition. So with a little bit of thinner on my brush, I'm establishing that lighter plane, that value plane, uh, as the sun was hitting the roof of that uh, covered bridge and I liked the pattern um, as it develops later in the painting as you uh, the little insert picture here isn't the same as what it ended up being uh, in the painting at the end because there was the leaves the trees cast an interesting play of shadow on the roof and so I um, blocked those in as I could but I still uh, managed to maintain the effect of the composition by keeping that area a lighter tone so now again um, I, as you can see, I jump around a little bit. So I'm blocking in the forms of the rock wall and the passage under the bridge, but I'm also playing with some of the lighter values too, because I like to see them in relation to each other. Sometimes I've seen myself do it and I've seen other people do it too as well. Um, as they're working in this stage, they're, they block in the drawing with a brush and then they um, correctly start with their darks and then um, without 
having a gauge of how light their lightest lights will be. Um, the They jump into the darks and then they just start working on the darks throughout the whole painting before they know it. The whole thing is really dark and heavy. So I try to encourage people to use a little bit more of the put your lights down as well as your darks when you're working out the composition, especially if it's a complex, complex scene, uh, because it really pays off to have that balance as you're working it all out together. And that's another reason why doing a thumbnail sketch is so critical, because that thumbnail sketch is going to help you um, as you're working out this stage. That way you don't have to think too hard about the design. You can concentrate on the composition. Now that dark value under the bridge is, I'm actually using a little bit more green into those shadows, a blue green, uh, just because I know it's gonna be dark and I may as well paint it the uh, shade of green that I see it as. And so that has a little bit of phthalo green, which is very cool, and, um, and then the ultramarine blue. So working on just cleaning off some of that lighter value because I really want that to stand out as the focal area of the bridge. Now again, as I'm blocking in color for these, um, the overall masses, I am using a little bit more of the greens as I'm blocking in the trees because they do help to frame where I'm going to go with the composition. So that um, some of the cooler blues, blue greens off in the distance, uh, I'm taking a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of blue. I'm very, very careful to not get too much of the phthalo green in there. It can be very overwhelming. So that's some cerulean blue and um, ultramarine blue and some white to get the sky. It was this brilliant shade of blue. And I wanted to play with a little bit of that. There wasn't very much peeking through. And I always caution people to be very careful when you're painting fall colors that you don't get the sky too distracting and let the colors just sing for themselves. But the colors weren't, <laughs> of the trees, were not. Um, I mean, I didn't have the corals and the reds and such, so there was a lot of yellow. And I thought that that was okay to paint the sky as brilliant blue as I saw it, um, just keeping with some of the fun of the, the colors of the day. Right into that sky blue mixture, I'm grabbing some cadmium yellow medium, and I'm blocking in some of the colors of the more lit part of the trees, um, actually applying the paint for the purpose of finishing that passage. Uh, and because they're background trees, I'm squinting at them and I'm trying to just see the, them in a more flatter um, way as I look at that background. Almost uh, some of the greens are a little bit more yellow, some are a little bit more chartreuse spring green, some are more, um, more still in the green side of the fall golden colors. So you just, I had the one mixture on my palette and then into that you can add variations of different colors that you see in the scene before you. I never mix up all my colors prior because there's so much spontaneity of painting and as you're looking and you're observing that sometimes you take a little bit of this color and that color and um, you allow that free flow of thought and feeling as you're painting.
Now these trees off to the right of the scene, they were a little bit lighter in um, reality, but I, since I wanted them to serve a purpose of framing the front of the covered bridge, uh, I made them a little bit darker, and I will still go through and add some more of the variations of the um, fall colors and some highlights and so forth. But in the overall visual um, composition of um, this scene, I wanted those to be a little bit darker than what I saw. So you have to be willing to be adaptable and make some changes as you're going along. Um, you don't want to be too literal to your scene to where you feel like you are in handcuffs and you have to make it exactly as you see it. Because, um, like I've said before, artists are poets. <laughs> you need to make your composition of your painting be what is the most beautiful thing. Nature is just going to do what it's going to do. Um, it might put a tree in a wrong place or whatever. And so you have to make those decisions as an artist. What is going to be best... Um, for a lovely piece of decoration, and which is essentially what a painting is. It's, it's um, a series of placing objects in a rendered uh, format that, that the artist has designed and formatted, no matter what it is you're painting. So, uh, as opposed to a photograph, just a regular photo. As I'm painting the light moving across the roof of this building, it, it shifts, even though it's still lit, um, towards the right of the roof, it's brighter, more sunlit, because that's the side that the sun is, the angle that the sun is hitting it from. As it slips back, it it's kind of goes into more of a, a mauve shadow, even though it still isn't as dark as a shadow. So what I'm pointing out here is the movement of light. On any given object, there is light movement, um, which means it's most intense in one place, and it'll fade. If you look at the light on a tree trunk, or even the light here on the side of the um, building, photographs don't capture light movement. Um, so you have to, but you can see it when you're there, and uh, so you have to just observe that phenomenon in nature whenever you're studying. And it's one of the reasons I I really like teaching people from the foundation of still lifes because it's easier to observe when you have a spotlight how light moves across the table surface. And I started out my journey into art doing still lifes, but as I ventured more into plein air, I realized doing a landscape painting is just like a still life. You've got the table surface, the background, and then the objects, and the way that the light falls on it, and the way the light moves across it is all vital to painting, painting atmosphere, edges, um, mystery, composing your picture, and um, being adaptable and so forth. It all ties together. <clears throat> so, um, and, and I tried to incorporate the methods of still life painting into my landscape painting because it just makes so much more sense and feels like it's a little bit more controllable. Um, and I do think that when the further you study into art, the more you realize whatever your discipline, it should be compatible with each other. The concepts of portraiture, the concepts of still life and, and landscape or painting pets, whatever, they all, the, all the ideas have a nice cohesive marriage. You can see as I'm constructing this um, covered bridge that I started with sort of the middle tone. I blocked in the side, the, the boards on the side, and then with a clean, sharp brush. And this is a synthetic. Um, I'm able to get a nice chiseled edge sculpting out the shadowed pieces of the building. And that's a nice way to work around structures. Chisel your brush, get a dark after you've sort of blocked in where your middle tones and your light are. And I'm blocking out the windows on the side and some of the architectural features of it. Uh, again, just squinting down at the covered bridge to see it in its most simplistic form. Uh, underneath the bridge, that uh, shadow gives it a nice um, sense of that it's a, a bridge floating in the air. Um, 
right there. So, uh, yeah, definitely keep even, you know, if you don't always like to paint with synthetics, they're nice to have because they really hold a sharp chiseled edge. And at a different time, again, when this picture was taken, there were these wonderful purple shadows reaching across the path in front of me. So I blocked those in then at this point, um, just as they made this interesting pattern, just stretching across the sidewalk. And then it slips down into shadow. So it had a nice way of leading the viewer into the painting without being super obvious. Um, you know, here's a path, walk this way. So I like to... Um, it just use that pattern to suggest it's, it's a little bit more inviting. While I'm working on this passage, I wanted to take a moment to inform you of um, what something I'm planning on doing this coming year, 2022. I will be going live on Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. I want to just do some short live videos talking about some basic art essentials. So join me here on YouTube or Facebook for a live video just essential stuff. If you have ideas, shoot me a quick note and let me know. I know I feel like at this point the painting is pretty much all blocked in in color. Uh, none of the trees are put in place, but the overall sense of the whole painting is there. So I sort of shift gears in my mind as I'm thinking, okay, now we can start building up the layers of um, objects so I start to put in the shapes of the trees in the foreground and I'll be putting in the fencing and the bushes and things like that at this point point. and that's how I deal with each painting is you, you kind of know when you get to that point okay now we now we can do the next layer of fun <laughs> and then I, I always feel a little sense of relief when I've reached this because the whole thing is masked in.
I had to move my camera because the glare got so bad on the canvas, but uh, at this point, um, now I'm coming back through with the trees sort of blocked in where they need to be. I'm adding more of the sky holes, working now from the background to the foreground, building up the information that only the information that is going to be important to conveying the story. I'm not worried about all the detail because all of that detail is not going to make a better picture. What is going to make a, a good painting is to get the information that tells the story. And it's surprising what you don't need. <laughs> so if you squint down at your scene, um, you can determine what's essential. And what you see while you're squinting are more the important details to put in your painting. And that also helps you sort of gauge a little better too about how much time you need to spend on your plein air. Only what's essential. So, um, you know, if you want to make a picture of more uh, detailed, fully realized painting, which there's nothing wrong with that, then it may be a situation where you want to keep coming back for a few days because the lighting will shift and change so much as I've already addressed a few times, even in this video from the example of my insert photo to what I'm actually painting, there are some changes. So um, without getting too frustrated, and people do often want to make a more detailed planner study, just go back after a few days or whenever you have the same lighting conditions. Uh, again, so now I have taken my brush. Uh, things get kind of fuzzy as you're working and sometimes they get smudged, whatever. Uh, so I take a smaller chiseled brush and I come back through and just clean up my edges especially on the areas where it is a focal point. I want my architectural structures to be um, nice and clean and sharp. And be sure to double check your angles when you're um, working on your structure. The photo of the insert compared to where I was standing, the angles were different. And so um, just double check that, because if you get anything slightly off, on your architectural picture, whether it's a house or building, whatever, uh, it's gonna it's gonna show. So make sure you can take the your brush and lock your arm out straight and hold your brush along the angle of a roof line or a, you know a sideline, whatever, to check your perspective and then hold without unlocking your arm. Just move your arm down to your painting to see if your lines match up, and that's one way you can check your perspective. So whenever I'm putting in details like the trim and the boards on the covered bridge or the fencing, I start with just a middle tone color. So in this fence, I'm just doing sort of a middle tone brown. To that, then I add the shadows and then the end of the fence structure, I'll add the highlights. Um, when I'm all done with the fence, I'll take some of the background color and just clean up and sharpen the edges. And I did the same thing with the structural elements on the covered bridge. Because this area is the focal area, the bridge and underneath it, 
I want to give the path under the bridge um, a little bit more attention and just to sort of captivate the imagination and you know allow the viewer to think oh I want to go for a walk down there and I want to so I'm taking my brush and just um, with some horizontal strokes indicating the the sidewalk as it slips under there into shadow Taking a little bit more of that lavender color, I'm pulling back, uh, pulling up some of the highlights that were on the path in front of me as the shadow um, sort of stretched across it. I'm making the shapes basically a little bit more interesting and giving him the path some highlights that it needed. Some of the light started um, sort of cascading down the stone wall as I was there that afternoon. And I thought that it had an interesting effect connecting the ground to the covered bridge. So I um, wanted to play with a few of those little light sparkles um, where I thought that they were going to contribute to the composition. Always be asking yourself, is what I'm about to do going to help or hurt? Um, is, this, is this aspect... Um, over overbearing is it too much is it too much information then don't put it in and just step back that's why people step back all the time from their work um, because they're they want to see the whole thing the whole picture and just assess the situation do I need this with every brush stroke nothing is arbitrary everything is intentional so really take your time and there's no rushing These fallen leaves around the pathway are indicated with some varying shades of fall colors, just in short little choppy brush strokes, just to sort of suggest the feeling that they've been swept off to the side of the sidewalk. So I'm adding some of the foliage now to the trees, and um, these are the background clumps of foliage. I will add um, the finer branches over this and then add some foliage over those branches. So always thinking in layers uh, as I'm building up the painting. I wanted to take this moment as I wrap up this painting to talk to you about my blog that I have on my website. I will be talking about a lot more ideas and concepts and things this year as I um, write more on it. If you're not already a part of it, check the link out and I'm going to be writing about artistic ideas but also other things in my life that I think that you might find interesting. Um, people ask about my cancer and they ask about <laughs> other things that I do. Um, I think a lot of artists are kind of renaissance artists and that they like to do all kinds of things. So 
check it out and join my newsletter to be updated on any specials and workshops that I have coming up this year of 2022. I may be coming to your area. So check it out and I hope to hear from you. Well, that pretty much wraps this video up. I wanted to thank you so much for joining me as I painted this covered bridge. Remember, if you like this video, to give it a like and a subscribe. Um, hit the little bell to be notified of any upcoming new videos I have that are just released. I really appreciate your comments and um, I'm always open to suggestions if there's something that you'd like to see me uh, talk more about or um, maybe do a demonstration on. That just uh, I'm always happy to work with you and it's important to me that I think that the most people, the more people that get out there and plein air paint, the better the world will be any kind of painting, studio painting, whatever, it's good for the soul. I look forward to this coming year and I will see you next time.